Good evening, everyone. This is Dana, and I hope everyone has had a fantastic week. I am very excited this evening to talk to you about the different types of budgets. Now, I'm just going to do an overview of a few that um, you may or may not know about. But um, before I do that, I want to talk about budgeting as a whole. Now, they did a survey, um, the National Foundation of Credit Counseling did a survey a couple of years ago, and they found that 47% of Americans use budgeting methods to keep track of their spending. So that's kind of concerning because you would say, well, what would be some reasons why I would want to budget? And for me, um, budgeting my money helps me be in control of my money instead of it controlling me. It um, allows me to um, contribute to my financial goals. If I have certain goals, um, doing the budget helps me see where there are what I call holes in the bag. Um, you know, some areas where I'm leaking money for example, paying interest I shouldn't be paying. And it allows me to adjust my um, spending and savings where I need to. I'm looking at the big picture and it helps me control um, my spending habits because I don't want them to get out of control. I want to be able to harness the resources that I have, which is my money. And also I can find out what I can and cannot afford because sometimes it may not be an income problem. It may be a spending problem. Also, I'm less stressed because I know where everything is because it's something that I don't have to do all of the time. It's not a have to, it's a want to because once I've done it, as uncomfortable it, as it may be at the beginning, then I can actually move forward and um, I'm, I feel less stressed. And of course, you know, some people feel that they start a budget, they won't be able to stick to it because it's going to take time. And for some people, it may be boring, but I can attest that it was very challenging for me at first but once I got into the habit of it or the hang of it if you will and I also started looking at different techniques it became easier because one technique may be better than the other it all depends on your need so let's go ahead and take a look at some budgeting techniques now if you're new to budgeting um, I up at the card at the top have a reference that we started at the beginning of the year as to how to start getting your expenses together. Because for zero-based budgeting, this method is good if you have a set income each month or you have a reasonable estimate of what your income is going to be every month. Now, zero-based budgeting is the most time-consuming because you're going to have to get into each um, detail of each line item. And what I mean by line item is zero-based budgeting is exactly what it says. You have your income, then you subtract your expenses, and the difference would be zero. So let's say that you had an income of 3500 your income would be $3,500 and your expenses would be $3,500 and that would equal to zero. Now, when I say the expenses are $3,500, I don't mean that you just spend it all, like I used to say, willy nilly, because some of it may, some of that $3,500 may represent a savings goal. And you definitely want to have a savings goal if you don't have one already. To have one in mind so you want to build in your savings goal now this one is the most time consuming so it usually works out for people who um, have already done budgeting for a while so if you go back to our previous videos you will see that for Angela one of our um, 
I think she's a Gen X. You will actually see that she does what we call zero based budgeting. So she has an assignment for every dollar that she brings in. So again, zero based budgeting is you receive 3,500 and your expenses are 3,500 and that equals to zero and you, your expenses will also include your emergency fund or your savings and investment goals. The envelope system is similar to the zero base budget. The big difference is that we are going to be doing everything in cash. So what you're going to do is if your income is $3,500, you're going to take the $3,500 and you're going to put them in spending categories. And again, remember, we do have the savings and investment categories. Now, this is not a hard and fast rule for your envelopes. For example, if you put $200 for groceries and um, let's say you have another category for entertainment, you can move them around. Let's say that your groceries or even your gas for that matter has increased. You can take it from other what we call variable expenses. You can move that around. Now we do have what we call fixed expenses, which is like your mortgage, your car payment, or your student loans. Those amounts are pretty, and your utilities, um, even though they may change a little bit, but for the most part, those are fixed. We're talking about the variables that can be moved around a little bit. So like I said, the envelope system is similar to the zero base. Again, you're going to um, try to get to zero. And now remember, whatever extra money you have over, over a lot of times well, people will put it into their savings and investment. And hopefully um, in this instance, it pretty much prevents you from what we call overdrawing because you're using cash. Now, the only downside, if we want to call it a downside, is there are some people that don't feel comfortable using this method with cash because sometimes they don't want to have a lot of cash around in the house. Now, I'm not a big fan of debit cards, but you can do a virtual envelope, if you will. So um, the envelope system is another method. And for some people, it's a very popular method because they can see physically see the money coming in and they can physically see the money going out. Now on the 50, 30, 20 budget, this one again is straightforward, but it requires less work than the zero based or the envelope budgets. And so what you have is you have a percentage of your income going into these categories. So you have 50%. So out of the 3,500, you have 50% going to your necessary expenses, 30% going to your discretionary and 20% going to your um, debt or savings payments. So what we mean by necessity is, for example, groceries. That would be in the necessity category. Discretion would be going out to eat with your friends. And then, of course, savings and your debt repayments would be um, your savings, investment, or even your emergency um fund. Now, even though it says 50, 30, 20 budget, you kind of don't have to stick to that. You can make the changes according to your needs. For example, you may need to increase your 20% on your savings or debt, or you may have to increase your uh, necessary expenses percentage. So tailor it to your needs. This is just um, a percentage that's assigned to different categories and they're put into those three main areas. Now, this pay yourself first budget is really interesting and it primar primarily focuses on your savings and debt repayment. So let's go back to the $3,500 um, income. Now, of course, you would have to know exactly what your fixed expenditures are or the 
payments that you have to make. So what you would do is out of the $3,500, let's say you set aside 20% for your savings and debt repayment or whatever that amount is. You'll take that amount and take that off the top and whatever's left, you will spend it on whatever you want to spend it on. Now, what's really um, good about this is that it helps you focus on your high interest debt and also building up your emergency fund. You're making that a priority and you're doing that first. And that pretty much frees up um, the rest of the money. So let's say, for example, on the 3,500, let's say you set aside, instead of a percentage, you set aside a dollar amount where you said 500 will go toward your savings and if you have debt repayment, that kind of thing. So you get the $3,500. And of course, this is the net pay, not the gross. This is what you actually bring home. You take the 500 off the top and then the $3,000, you can spend it whatever way you want. Of course, you're taking into consideration, you're making your rent payment, your mortgage and all the other necessary payments. But the priority is on your savings and your um debt repayment. So I kind of like this pay yourself first budget because it it's not, um, it's a little bit more relaxed. And so you're not focused on, oh, did I spend overspend in this particular category or that particular category? It's what you can pretty much are free to do what you want. Now this, the no budget, it may look negative on the face of it because it's no, but this budget method is really kind of interesting because instead of creating a budget, you're basically not going to spend money you don't have. So if you have $3,500 in the bank account, that's all you have to spend. That's it. So to do this, you want to make sure you're paying attention to your checking account balance. That's very important. And if you have recurring bills, you're going to have to keep track of this because um, the way you'll have it set up, a lot of times you'll know what time, let's say you get paid twice uh, every other week. You need to know when that particular bill is going to be due. So you want to pay attention to that. And of course, you want to set aside money for your savings and debt repayment. So you want to make sure that's there. So you you can spend whatever's left in your bank account without overdrawing your account. So this means that let's say that you didn't spend all of the $3,500 in, let's say in September, then this month in October, whatever's left will be included in the no budget. And again, you're not creating a budget. You're just paying attention to the bills that you absolutely have to pay. And then you're spending the rest how you see fit to the point where um, you were not going to spend anything that you don't have. So the credit cards pretty much would go out of the window uh, it, unless you're going to be paying it in full every month. So that is the no budget. Now, these are just examples of some budgeting methods, and I'm sure there are others. I just wanted to give you some just to get you an idea of what's out there, because what's good for one person may not be good for someone else. Now, when I was doing some research on budgeting methods, I also looked into, I guess it's called Kakaibo. And I think I'm going to be talking about that Monday. So make sure that you're subscribed to the channel because um, I think Kakaibo is more of a mindset. So I thought it would be appropriate to actually go into Kakaibo on, mon on Mindful Monday since it's being mindful with your Monday money. Excuse me. So whether you're doing it with an app, electronically, with a spreadsheet, or actually writing it down with a pen and paper, I can promise you that putting together a budget, no matter what method you use, will actually benefit you. 
It will also show you things that you need to see. While it may be uncomfortable at first, as I've said before, it is well worth it. And it definitely is the step that you need to be able to be financially independent. It's pretty much like using a roadmap. You want to, if you're going from one place to another that you've never been to before, it's always a good idea to go with a map. So hopefully this information was beneficial to you. Um, please, as I said before, um, put your comments in the description below because there may be some other methods that we may not know about. Also, go ahead and subscribe to the channel, like the video and share it with a friend. I'll talk to you soon and have a great weekend.